Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. If there's anything unusual about my voice at the moment, uh, I have a little bit of a cold. Don't worry, nothing serious. Today, for your viewing entertainment, we have Paranoob in the brand new all-singing, all-dancing Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105, very similar to the existing Kanonen Jagdpanzer, except for in one very important regard. The gun isn't completely shit. Aside from that very significant difference, the two machines are very much the same. There are some minor differences, however. The Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105 has slightly less health than the Kanonen Jagdpanzer with a 19mm gun. Both machines are incredibly agile and fast, with a top speed of 70km per hour. But the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105 has a slightly lower power to weight ratio, as a result of having exactly the same 500 horsepower engine as its predecessor, but being slightly heavier. Both machines also have terrible armour, with 30mm at the front and sides and only 8mm at the rear, which means they take a lot of high explosive damage. As Paranoob here, very unfortunately has just found out with a very lucky artillery blind shot into the trees and bushes on the top of this hill, which has robbed him of half of his health before he's even fired his first shot at the gate, and in fact before he was even spotted. So, yeah, not a great start. Where this machine does shine, however, is in that gun. The gun on the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 90 was a very underwhelming 90mm gun. The gun on the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105, as the name would suggest, is a very, very nice German version of the famous British L7 105mm anti-tank gun. Now, it does have a kind of slow reload, as you'd expect having this ridiculously powerful gun which you normally only see on tier 9 and 10 medium tanks. But down here on the tier 8 tank destroyer, well even with full premium consumables and crew skills, the fastest you can get the reload down to is around 9.7 seconds. But while it doesn't hit very often, it does hit very hard and is incredibly reliable and accurate. It has APCR ammunition as standard with very high shell velocity, the base accuracy is 0.32 and the base aiming time is only 1.8 seconds. Of course, those are just the stock figures. Assuming you have a 100% crew and are running modifications like improved vents and have premium consumables like the chocolate, which you can see Paranoob is using here, you can actually get that accuracy down to 0.29 and the aiming time down to 1.62 seconds. Basically, this thing doesn't miss. And with APCR as standard ammunition, not only do you have to give very little lead because of the high shell velocity, but it also has 268 millimeters of penetration. And when that isn't enough, you can, of course, just press the two key, spend some money, and have 330 millimeters of penetration, although significantly slower shell velocity with the premium high explosive anti-tank. But the APCR, as you can see, with these shots at that T100LT, that APCR doesn't take any prisoners. We'll talk about how you can get this machine in a minute. For now, things are actually getting quite interesting. Half of his team's dead, and the eastern flank has completely collapsed. Although, to be completely fair, while the enemy team have crushed his team on the eastern flank, his team have done the same thing to the enemy team over on the western flank, and they do in fact have a light tank aggressively hunting for enemy artillery as that T-100 continues to feel the pain from this 105mm gun's devastatingly accurate APCR shells. Paranoob has now fallen back to a safe position and is standing by to repel boarding teams. Gun for the Carnarvon. Unlucky to not do any damage, but he's blown his tracks off, so... and that guy's a sitting duck, so he leaves him, switches to the E-100. E-100 momentarily disappears, takes the shot, but when we see him again he's lost just over 300 health, so that was definitely a hit. And suddenly the enemy team aren't feeling quite so confident about pushing around the eastern flank into the base. E-100, taking a lot of fire, although it looks like, a, oh no, wait, he is actually taking some more damage as well. Paranoob goes for the next shot, and penetrates the side skirts. It's not guaranteed penetration here. Side of the turret would be a better shot, but he's trying to keep him immobilised, but the gun just cannot quite reload quickly enough for him to pin the E100 down again. 
looking for another target. And that, unfortunately, was a ricochet. Well, WZ-111-4 does have a remarkably tough turret. There's actually a platoon of three of those on the enemy team. And they are going to do quite well. As Paranoob's team continues to hemorrhage tanks at quite an alarming rate. And while the push into the base appears to have had the edge taken off it for the moment, the overall tactical picture is not looking too good. Aside from Paranoob down here, just about everybody on his team is all clustered into a very defensive position over there on the lee side of the hill in the centre of the map. Which kind of makes sense when you are outnumbered. Have a look at the map, you'll notice that their surviving light tank, the WZ-131, is in a position to spot anybody that tries to hook around and outflank them from the north, and in fact he's just eliminated an enemy tank in doing so. Which means that when the enemy team push, and here it comes, the tanks on his team are only really going to get that one opportunity to hit them in their vulnerable lower glacis as they come over the top of the hill. And here comes the push from the WZ-111s. And they're continuing to lose tanks at a frightening rate. Paranoob trying to do what he can. Doing what a tank destroyer does best. Shooting from cover. He's taken one out. The enemy team do still enjoy a numbers advantage, but it's not that big. And here comes... Okay, this is how you do not use <laughs> a Canon and Jagdpanzer 105. It's not an E25, okay? It might look like one, but it isn't an E25. Really do need to kill that guy. He's been tracked. Looking for the shot. No, that's the problem here. The slow reload. Going for the 50 TP. And there's the Scorpion G. There's only three tanks left alive on his team now. They're not quite outnumbered two to one. And he's managed to level the scores a little by taking out the Scorpion G. The 50 TP has gone down, but they've lost another tank. There's only two of them left alive against three enemies. And now he's the last tank alive. Not a problem. You have a very powerful gun. Well, yeah. But he's already lost half of his health. And this machine only has 30 millimeters of armor. And while an E25, under similar circumstances, if it was bottomed here in a tier 9 battle, might be able to pull off some ridiculous stunts by using the extreme speed and maneuverability and low profile and detectability in order to get up close into dogfighting range with an enemy tank and use that low alpha damage but rapid firing 75mm gun to continually keep the enemy tanks tracked while it does its dirty business on them. You can't do that with a gun that takes not far short of 10 seconds to reload because the enemy tanks are going to just repair their tracks before you can get a second shot off. So you're going to have to rely on more traditional tank destroyer tactics in this thing. You're going to have to keep falling back, firing from cover, using the insane speed of maneuverability to relocate and continually attempt to spot the enemy tanks, set up a shot from concealment, and then fall back, relocate, and do it all again from a different position. And that's pretty much exactly what he's doing. And he's going to have to do it at least three times. The enemy team still have a pair of wz 111s and a Yag Tiger, and they have seven kills between them. Can he kill? Yep, okay. That's even the old slimy, but it did get spotted. No incoming fire. Drop. Oh, there it is. Don't know who that was. Possibly the Yag Tiger. Drops down into the low ground to go unspotted, and get some solid cover between himself and anybody that may have momentarily been aiming at him, and guns the engine, moves to a new position, and attempts to relocate. And there's the WZ-111. Now admittedly he didn't really have a particularly good shot from there. And while he did have some solid cover in front of him in the shape of that dead tank, he didn't have any concealment. He would have probably been spotted if he'd fired. So he relocates over here to where there's some actual concealment, reacquires the target, pulls back, waits until the bushes in front of him have gone solid, which means he can now fire and that target will not see him. Now, okay, he missed. And that guy snaps a shot off down the line of bearing from the incoming shot. And doesn't miss by much. But Paranoob's already moving to another concealed position. Now the point of this whole pulling back until the concealment in front of you goes opaque is so that you can fire through that concealment and the target you're shooting at 
won't actually spot you. It doesn't make you invisible. You're only invisible to the target down the line of bearing that you're shooting at. Any other target off to the side, for example, that doesn't have a line of bushes between you and them, may still see you when you fire. And that will be bad news. Now, while he did have great concealment from the bushes and trees on the small hill over there, he didn't have particularly good shots at this WZ-1114. And this guy clearly knows what he's doing. He's currently sitting on five kills. So, again, he's using the low profile and great detectability of this machine to sneak around the flank and try to get some better shots into that enemy tier 9 heavy. And it seems to be working. Question is, where did he go? Where did he go? He's clearly not capping anymore. I mean, that just advertises your presence. You're never going to win this battle by capping. Come on, little Chinaman. Where are you? There he is. And not spotted. Although, that guy clearly knows he has been spotted. But it's not clear that he knows from which direction he's been spotted. So we're going to sneak up. And we will be seen here. And his turret is pointing the wrong way. And unfortunately, that was probably a direct result of having premium ammunition loaded instead of APCR, which would almost certainly have penetrated. And while it would have had to have had a high damage roll in order to finish that guy off, it would definitely have done some damage compared to the premium high explosive anti-tank ammunition, which explodes on contact with whatever it hits first. And if whatever it hits first is spaced armor, or what I suspect happened here, his tracks, it's going to damage the tracks, but it's not actually going to damage the tank. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened there. Those trees are actually still providing concealment for him. There he is. Did he get spotted? No, he didn't. He managed to get down into the dip in the ground without being spotted. And now he's on his side. And this time, he pumps the heat right into the side of that guy's turret, where it's going to do the most use. Now, of course, they're both angling for position. The enemy tank, in order to get the shot off, and Paranoob just buying some time until he's reloaded. And the enemy tank is now going to require two shots to kill him. And thanks to the ridiculously fast aiming time, assuming you have 100% crew, vents, and premium chocolate consumables of about 1.62 seconds, the chances were very, very good that he was always going to get the first shot off anyway. And that just leaves one surviving enemy tank the Yag Tiger, who does have one kill to his name, but I was pretty sure had actually gone AFK at this point in the battle. But there he is. And what took him so long? What has he been doing for the last five minutes while Paranoob has been dueling that WZ-111-4? Even with a stock engine. He should have been able to get down here long before now, regardless of where he was on the map. You see, thanks to this incredibly low-profile machine, those bushes were actually keeping him undetected. He's still firing heat, by the way, which is curious. APCR would have sliced through the lower glacis, and in fact, the casement front of the fighting compartment of the Ag Tiger, like a hot knife through butter. At this point, he's really just spending money needlessly. It's possible, of course, that with all of the pressure of being the last tank alive on his team, and victory depending on him finishing off that Yag Tiger that he just forgot he was firing heat. And, yep, same spot, other side of the tank this time. And the Yag Tiger didn't see him. He's just playing with his food here, really, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> You've got to kind of feel sorry for that poor old German Tier 9 TD. He knows he's down here, but he just can't see him. Looking for a better shot at another perfect line of bushes there. And he's going to pop one, wait for it to aim. Same spot. And he's just taking this guy apart, one shot at a time. One more is all it's going to take, and that guy's just firing in blind desperation now. And again, he can afford to take a hit. And at this point, the Yag Tiger can't. So he's feeling confident. It's time to get in close and finish this. And he's got him. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the Kanonen Jagdpanzer 105, played for us today by Paranoob. There are a number of different ways you can get your hands on this thing. 
It's available in three different increasingly expensive packages in the premium shop for pre-orders at the moment, I seem to understand, but you can also get a hold of it if you're an owner of the existing Kanoniniak Panzer with a 90mm gun. Wargaming are offering you two options. You can get the new Kanoniniak Panzer 105 if you're a Kanoniniak Panzer 90 owner for a 50% discount, or, and this is the option I would recommend, you can completely trade in your existing piece of garbage Canon and Jagdpans and 90 and get one of these things for free. Whichever option you prefer, I don't know which one I'll be going for, uh, there's a link down below in the video description to the relevant article on the World of Tanks portal page. So, Paranoob, thank you very much for sending that replay in. Some masterful use of fairly standard tank destroyer tactics there, everybody else, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope some of you learned something from it. And as always, take care. And I'll catch you next time.